Several years ago, four games were announced, all within a rather small time frame of one another, coincidentally enough. Genshin Impact, followed by Blue Protocol, Tower of Fantasy, and Grand Saga, all in that order. I actually remember almost falling out of my chair in excitement. At the time, we all thought Genshin was going to be an MMO. And while it ultimately failed to live up to that expectation, the remaining three games all did. Fast forward to 2020, Genshin Impact released globally. In 2021, Grand Saga released within Korea. Tower of Fantasy released within China. In 2022, Tower of Fantasy released globally. And in 2023, Blue Protocol released within Japan. And while we're still waiting on literally any news at all pertaining to Blue Protocol, and Pixel, the developers behind Grand Saga and the upcoming Chrono Odyssey MMO, confirmed that Grand Saga is finally releasing globally. During Genshin Impact's first month of release, it managed to accumulate $245 million in revenue globally, an absolutely monstrous number that has to this day only been rivaled by Honkai Star Rail in terms of gacha games. But we're not here to talk gotcha games. Tower of Fantasy made approximately $83 million from August through December in the five months following its release globally. Honestly, a pretty good number given this is an MMO and was overshadowed by all of the bugs, the hacks, the exploits, and the drama that it was embroiled in. Blue Protocol, according to Bandai Namco, has severely underperformed within Japan, with them going as far as not wanting to publicly disclose official numbers. Yeah, that, that isn't very reassuring, Bamco. Grand Saga within Korea alone, as there has been no global release up until now, managed to earn over $100 million within its first month. In terms of MMOs, Grand Saga has managed to earn, in its first month alone, more than Tower of Fantasy and Blue Protocol did combined. Going on to not only become the highest grossing, fastest growing free-to-play MMORPG, but also one of the most anticipated upcoming MMOs with a relatively high chance of success in the global market. Before we delve any deeper into Grand Saga, allow me to take a moment here to thank my incredible patrons over on Patreon who allow for me to do dedicated videos like this every single week. You guys are absolutely phenomenal and I cannot thank you all enough for the support. Let's get back to Grand Saga. As of last week, a global website for Grand Saga, GrandSaga.com, popped up with the message, global launch coming soon, featuring the main heroine of the story. The only bit of information we received in terms of global confirmation up until this point was when the CEO replied to a user on Twitter on January 15, 2023, saying, the global version of Grand Saga is being prepared. It will come out after many parts have been fixed in the current service version. It'll be released when kindness, convenience, and content quality are maximized. Everything will be reflected in the Korean and Japanese version. The CEO of the studio himself publicly stated that the game will not release. This will not come out until various different aspects of the game have been fixed within the current service version. Openly admitting to the game still being broken and unfinished at that point in 2023. While it was very positively received in Korea, the studio wanted to make certain that it was perfected before releasing globally. You only have one first impression, and they knew they didn't want to ruin theirs. Now some MMO players are a fairly unforgiving type and will immediately write a game off if it's crap. I appreciate that instead of rushing the game out globally like Tower of Fantasy did, and Pixel are taking the time to polish their game, which is evident by the statement that it will not release globally until content quality is maximized. Unfortunately, we still don't have a concrete release date yet, but what we do know is, it is theoretically coming soon. Next week, next month, sometime later this year. Global is not only confirmed, but the game itself has achieved a state that they are happy with. In terms of what needs polish though, my guess, and this is just pure speculation here, is that they know that there are features or functions present that Western players just will not like. And they were trying to make alterations to the game ahead of the global release, so they aren't met with immediate irreconcilable failure, much like Kakao were doing with the removal of auto combat in Odin Valhalla Rising. For those of you that are unaware of what Grand Saga is, allow me to help you out with a bit of a TLDR. Grand Saga is an open world anime MMO. It features segregated zones, similar to Final Fantasy XIV and Guild Wars 2. It utilizes a hack and slash hybrid action combat system, providing players the option to lock onto targets. It seems to be fully voice acted with animated cutscenes. 
It is going to be completely free to play with monetization in the form of gacha, much in the same way that Genshin Impact and Tower of Fantasy monetize their games. You'll obtain characters, each with their own respective weapons, fighting styles, character personalities. This adds a lot of diversity for players as you can actually deploy several characters in battle, meaning less reliance on other players. It is unconfirmed who will be publishing Grand Saga or if NPixel are choosing to self-publish. There is absolutely no censorship present in game at all, unlike what Amazon are doing with Blue Protocol. Current confirmed platforms are PC, Android, and iOS. And I know what you're thinking, oh my god, Sticks, this is just another crappy mobile MMO. And no, from what I've seen, from what other people have told me, no it's not. This is a game built for both platforms, not exclusively for one. Is it comparable in quality to Final Fantasy XIV or Guild Wars 2 or World of Warcraft? No. but. Name a single anime MMO that is or has ever been of comparable quality. You can't, because there are none. Yes, this game would have likely benefited in terms of quality more from remaining a PC exclusive and disregarding mobile as a platform, but at the same time, Genshin, Tower of Fantasy, there are many gacha games that have found success with the inclusion of mobile functionality, and cross-platform MMOs are love or hate it, the future of the genre. They never confirmed which regions will be supported in the global release of the game. You can be certain major English speaking countries will be given priority, North America, Canada, some parts of Europe. Although it is worth noting whatever regions Grand Saga ultimately ends up supporting, the upcoming Chrono Odyssey MMO will also likely support. It is believed to feature an English dub when it releases. Although admittedly, I've never heard a good English dub in an anime MMO before, personally. I'd probably prefer Japanese. I have no idea if they have any intentions of holding a closed beta test or multiple ahead of their release. It's highly plausible, likely being preceded by a pre-registration phase, rewarding players for meeting certain milestones. So far, from what I found online and heard from active players, Grand Saga has been a relatively enjoyable game. And given their significantly higher revenue than some of their competition, namely Tower of Fantasy. It could be argued that this is a higher quality game with considerably more potential, but we can't be sure of that until we actually get to play it ourselves. Overall, I think the success or failure of Grand Saga isn't necessarily down to one single thing. I think Grand Saga is going to appeal to a demographic of players interested in anime MMOs. Anime MMOs are some of the worst MMOs in the entire genre. There's no contesting that opinion. So even at its worst, this isn't gonna be any worse than the crap we already have plaguing the genre right now, or all of the mobile MMOs that release with cheap PC ports. Grand Saga will also appeal to tens if not hundreds of thousands of players that are looking for a fun MMO to play, bolstering its player base further. Will it be a success? It already is within Asia. Any additional revenue accumulated outside of Asia is just icing on the cake and will aid NPixel in the global release of Chrono Odyssey. I'm looking forward to playing Grand Saga, and even if it does turn out to be horrible, I'm not gonna have any regrets wasting hours, days, or potentially weeks exploring and engaging with this world. Now, if Grand Saga doesn't look like an MMO you'd be interested in, absolutely no problem. I got you covered with two videos on screen right now that you should totally check out instead.